All right. How do we start with nothing? And let's make sure we have a little sound here. Make sure we have a little sound here. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Don't need the echo. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today for Make Music Live. I feel like there should be like showgirls or dancing or something behind me when I'm doing this. But uh, excited to go live with everybody today and talk about how to start with nothing. What do you do when you don't have any tools, any possibility for tools? I think we've all been there with our, our work, our music work. And we've said, I know I have some talent. I want to make some money with my music. And then there are some people who say, I want to make it with music performing. I want to make it with licensing. I want to make it with different things. So sometime in the past week, someone asked me a question about how would they get started with nothing? And this isn't the first time I've heard of this problem. Someone in India uh, mentioned it recently. And um, and if you're here in this post and you're you were here last week or when I think it was in this in this forum, but they said, What if I literally cannot afford anything to make music on? Not even a computer, not even an instrument, not even a device like a phone or a tablet. Now I wonder about this because it seems a little I don't know, iffy to me that people would not have this technology now. But um, is it possible to make music income with no instruments at all at your disposal? What if you especially want to compose and record music for stock and for sync libraries or to put on Spotify? What do you do if you literally, and I don't use the word literally lightly, I, um, but if you literally have nothing, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. That's that's what I want this live to be about. And I'm also going to be answering questions in the chat. So if you have any questions or you have experience that you'd like to tell us about from how you got started for nothing, I'm going to be talking about that for me today. But if you have experience uh, in getting started with nothing and you started with just zero and you moved up, I'm going to talk about my whole, like the two times that I that happened to me in my life and what would happen if it happened again. So that's the question I want to answer as well as answer any questions uh, for anyone joining in those uh, us here in the live and some questions maybe I've received on YouTube and Discord and via email if we have time. So welcome to DigiJ Productions. Hey, thanks for being here. Pete from Wisconsin, thanks for being here again today. Thank you so much. White Beam, thank you for being here today again. And Decent Views, good to see you today uh, here on the live Make Music Live. So today's Make Music Live is brought to you by our one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have been working with artists, songwriters, producers, musicians, composers, and singers for over 30 years and helping them figure out what to do, especially when they are starting at zero or near zero. Hey, Clemens from Germany, thanks for joining. Um, I kind of specialize in helping people go from zero to 60, um, as an artist, a songwriter, a producer, and now with composers and people who want to make music income. It's what I've always done for folks, mainly because I have had to do it myself. And so, uh, I've started at zero and it's what I've always done, uh, lead other people in how to do this and lead myself in how to do it and teach you how to do it. So teaching and leading and guiding are things that are just in my blood and they always will be. Uh, they are just, it's part of, I think teaching is a natural part of doing. And when you do something and you can do it well, you should teach other people how to do things. And that's just kind of why I started this channel in the first place and why um, I do what I do. And so this video is about starting from nothing. And if you are starting from nothing, uh, or starting with some decent tools or the very best tools, but you just don't know how to go about going to every, doing everything that you can. You don't know what to focus on. 
you don't know how to focus your your music, your tools, your direction, anything like that. Um, I'd love to talk to you more about my one-on-one coaching. And you can find out more about that at makemusicincome.com slash coaching. And the link is always in the description of all my videos about our coaching. Or you can just email me at makemusicincome at gmail.com. It's that easy. I'd love to help. And, um, and, and for you people really starting with nothing uh, and no money uh, at all, Remember, we have free things, and you can go to makemusicincome.com slash free. Uh, you can get our 50 ways to make music income free ebook. You can get our free short course on uploading the Pond 5, which uh, just made me some money this week with their membership. Maybe some of you got that as well. And uh, again, you can find that at makemusicincome.com slash free. You can find all those free things. So uh, in the chat, welcome. Uh, Love3, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Victorious, aka Dice Productions. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, uh, thanks for being with us today, man. We're going to have some good conversation today. Um, again, when I say starting with nothing, I think we've all started with nothing at some point. And make sure that as I'm talking, feel free to put your uh, your comments in the chat. I'll stop and catch up every now and then. But my lives are just a little bit different. Hey, M Tune, thanks for joining. Um, my lives are just a little different than other people's. I, I don't sit and stare at the screen waiting for a question. I have material prepared for you today. And, um, you know, I thought all about this and I, I put on my YouTube as, as I have for the past few weeks. Um, what do you want to hear more about Qu- answers about everything that I was getting from people or how to start from nothing. And, Imtun, are you in India? Is, do I remember that right? I, someone was from India last week, I believe, and they um, and they joined us. But uh, and, and someone was talking about not having any tools at all, no way to make music income where they were, and that really that really got to me, and I started thinking a lot about that. And um, so let's let's start with that. Really, you have nothing. Okay, so my first question is, are you really starting at nothing? Really? I mean, if I had to, I could create I could create quality stock music with my phone. Now you can't see my phone right now because I'm also using it as my camera. So uh, great, Mtune, thanks so much. this is this is for you. Um, Mtune, were you also telling me that you were having trouble finding ways to make music? Uh, where you were. Oh, you're right. Decent views. It was Argentina. But um, if anyone in here is having any issues with making music where they are, hey, 830. Well, again, I hope my dulcet, my dulcet tones soothe you towards bedtime, m uh, Cheers from Houston, Texas. Burnt CDs. Hey, thanks for joining. Um, so I was talking about if I had to start right now, I mean, I could start with my phone. Any of us could start with our phone. Um, now, granted, both my phone, I could also start with my tablet, which is over here serving as a monitor. But I, I could also start with my tablet if I had to. I could upload, uh, well, I have GarageBand on both of them. And GarageBand by itself is absolutely fine for creating stock music. At least I can make stock music on it. And I think anyone else could too, especially since you can now get some plugins for that on on your iOS devices. But almost everyone, and granted, both those things are $1,000 items, right? I mean, we pay for the phone over time. Sometimes you can do that with a tablet and pay for that over time. But they're both costly items. They're both a grand, you know, worth a grand or cost a grand. Um, But... Almost everyone watching this has something. You wouldn't be watching this if you didn't have something. I mean, you have a PC, you have a a Mac or a a regular PC, um, or you have a laptop of some kind, or you have a phone, or you have a tablet. If you're watching this, you have to have one of those things. Anyone watching this on anything other than, uh, than those things, I would love to know. I watch YouTube on TV a lot. I have it as an app on my television 
and I'll sit at night and just sit there and watch uh, YouTube on TV. But I know that's probably a, not in in the majority of people. But now you may say you do have an old computer of some kind, but you, it won't run any DAW software. Well, I think you'd be surprised. Um, Reaper is a free software that my brother would swear by. And um, I'll put links in all these things below. You can also check out uh, my video that I did. I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, I talk about, I have a free gifts video that I did. It talks about free DAWs and free plugins and free lots of things. But you'd be surprised. Reaper is pretty easy on systems. And I think it's it's something that even older PCs can run to some extent. Um, there's also Cakewalk from BandLab. Now, I believe that Cakewalk from BandLab takes a 64-bit system. So that might be a little bit more. But it's free also, just like Reaper is free. And Cakewalk was my very first sequencer, um, along with a free version of Logic. It was called Logic Fun in uh, in the 90s. This was way back when Logic was owned by eMagic and was on PC and Mac. This was before, uh, before Apple bought it. And there's also a free version of Studio One called Prime that is free to download and is by Personas. And I have that myself and I've had a lot of my clients use it. It's really uh, a good program for people starting out and looking for something free. And Personas is a quality company. So you can certainly uh, find that. All of these are in a video that I will link right up here once this thing is done. Uh, you can go back on my channel content for now if you're really looking for it until I get this video. Live videos take a while to process before I can add in the cards and things like that. But you can go into my content and go back to December and find my uh, Christmas gifts. It's the me, it's, it's, it's uh, Christmas elf Spock that you'll find uh, on the cover of that one, but I, I just list about 10 or, or more free things, including DAWs, including sounds and things like that. So you'll find that in that video. And uh, if you have a phone, iPhone or an iPad and nothing else, then you need GarageBand. I believe it now comes on all of those things. And GarageBand is the little brother to Logic and super powerful. I'm telling you people that it really, it continues to shock me how much it has in it and uh, certainly usable enough to create stock tracks, I, I think. And I've heard people create way better than stock on it. So um, I think, uh, I, and I know Android has a mobile version of FL Studio, which is a very popular doll right now. And there's a few other, uh, if not free, paid apps for Android. So if you have any kind of machine at all, a phone, a tablet, a PC, but especially a Mac of any kind. And you need to know that I am right now on a Mac mini, a 2014 Mac mini. That's, that's eight years old. Um, my iPad is a 2017 iPad Pro. And my phone is the newest thing, and it's two years old. And so all of these are two to eight years old. So I don't have brand new gear. and uh, We'll talk about now what to do if you have absolutely no computer, tablet, or phone to work on a little bit. I've got some ideas for that. But first, we're going to talk about instruments after I catch up with chat because it's getting busy in here. All right. So um, Love3 says, me too. I used my tablet to compose some stuff more than 10 years ago, even when I was on the train. Absolutely. Um, I, I want to do a whole tablet. Um challenge or at least a challenge myself to write completely write a stock tune from GarageBand on my tablet. Um, M2 says, I am lacking in organizing the samples loops before starting a track. I need some tips on that. Well, that sounds like another video um, and you should really look into my friend Stevie's uh, uh, Production Music Academy. He talks about those kinds of things all the time about producing. This channel is a little bit more about making income and and uh, and maybe giving you some some ideas on on how to move towards that. Uh, I I have a composer channel, and that talks a little bit about, about more composing. And and Steve fits kind of right in the middle of that, talking about production. Uh, not that I haven't been producing artists for the past uh, thirty years, but um, 
M tune, I would just say or in organizing samples and loops before starting a track. Well, if you listen to Stevie and I, who a couple of weeks ago we did how we start a track and 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 not using templates. I, we're neither of us are template users. It's I think it's a it's a little bit better just to go through everything from time to time and and remember what you have. Organize it perhaps even in a spreadsheet or something like that. But um, I just usually go and find things I need and 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 plug them in. Pete says Bill Haley once suggested get out of that kitchen and rattle those pots and pans for percussion tracks. Hey, dude, my brother literally paid, played pots and pans when when we were young, and I was playing piano, and he was playing literally on pots and pans, and we had these suitcases, and he would play on those while I would play piano. So definitely. Um, Ronan says, yes, GarageBand for the phone is pretty cool. I've used it before, and I think you can also send MIDI notes to other DAWs later if you like your song. Yeah, you can actually, you can do better than that. If it's on GarageBand on your phone or tablet, you can just uh, send it over to your computer and call it right up in GarageBand and Logic. You may not know that you can call a GarageBand file up in Logic. Just open it straight up. You used to have to do some stuff to do it. Now you don't. Somebody sends me a GarageBand file. I pull that right into logic and I'm right and we're working. So, um, but you can also send MIDI straight to, uh, you know, to another computer or something like that. And good morning to you as well, Ronan. Um, there is e love three says there is even waveform, which is free as a DAW and works fine. Yep. Um, there's a lot of DAWs like that. Um, Caleb Oswald, it's good to see you here. I use Pro Tools and Logic in college. I've been using GarageBand since getting back into recording. Very powerful free software, absolutely. And uh, it comes with any Mac or any, I believe any tablet or iPhone, if anyone can can kind of uh, uh, confirm that. But I find that uh, they're very useful. And so, all right, so sure, you have a DAW and it can make pro sounds, but what if you... If what if your doll can't make any sounds? Um, how do you find sounds? Like Mtune just said, he's using samples or they're using samples and loops. And I know a lot of uh, the people who follow my channel and that I consult with and coach, they use just samples. They don't even use an instrument, even though they are a guitar player or a keyboard player or something like that. But what if you play guitar and you don't currently own any guitars? Well. Could you borrow somebody's guitar? Um, that's that's one way to get going. I did that for lots of times. I would borrow somebody's keyboard and and work on it and mess around on it. Same if you play piano or keyboard, but you don't own one. Does anyone have one that you could borrow? Um, do you know you can get a keyboard controller for less than $50? And you can play... Uh, virtual sounds with your do you know there are people you, who who program straight from their keyboard i'm using a temporary keyboard here but there are people who play qwerty keyboard to play their notes they program on their keyboard without any of these things and by the way you can get uh some of these kind of midi controllers you can get like like i just said for under 50 dollars um if if you need a guitar you should be able to find a, a beat up acoustic or electric somewhere for 100, under a hundred bucks, maybe under 50 bucks. Check your local, uh, whatever you have. If you're in the US, check your Craigslist, check uh, iTunes, I mean, uh, eBay, and uh, save up some pennies and get something. There's, It's certainly possible to get, get things like that. Um, I, I have heard, <laughs> believe me, like I said, I've heard masterful things that people have done with their keyboard. So it's crazy what people can do. Um, if you wanna make music, you can make music. If you do have even the most mid basic MIDI controller, um, my free video that I talked about, um, my Christmas video, uh, the free gifts video, has lots of ideas for how to get quality sounds, including uh, Spitfire Labs and also Piano Book, which is sponsored by Spitfire. And there's way more you can find in the video, but there's so much free sounds out there. It's it's crazy the amount of free sounds out there um, with just Logic or just Reaper or just any of those things. And some of the free sounds you can download, it's crazy. Drums, basses, guitars, keyboards, strings, 
everything is out there free for you to download. So there's really no excuse to not have those things unless you don't have a computer. Um, now let's talk about DAW sounds. Um, again, if you are lucky to have a DAW like GarageBand, Logic, Studio One, uh, FL Studio, Ableton, or even Pro Tools, you have sounds that have come with the light versions. Sometimes they're light versions of those sounds, but they've come and been packed into those DAWs. If you're lucky enough to have Logic um, or uh, GarageBand, like I said, or Studio One, I think FL Studio and Ableton, both all those come with some decent sounds from what I understand. Um, even Pro Tools comes with a piano and some different things uh, that you can use. I think a lot of them come with Expand, which is a synth that has covers a lot of bases. And those are free type things. If anybody has any thoughts about those, I'd love to see it in the chat. Um, I have a new video that's actually posting tomorrow on my Hello Composers channel that shows um, what I created only using Logic Sounds. Um, and you'll be able to see it here. I'll put a link to it here once I get links into this video. And uh, you can also find it in the description. It was a challenge video that Stevie B did, and I'll also link that below as well, where everyone had to create using only sounds from their DAW. And this was part of his Production Music Academy, one of his challenges he does every month. And it was a lot of fun. And uh, I learned a lot about Logic uh, just by doing this challenge. And so um, if you have a DAW and you have a way to play MIDI notes and you really have no excuse to not make music if that is really what you wanna do. So guess what? What if you don't have sounds? Well, like you don't have a guitar, you don't play keyboard, you don't play any instruments. You can still get a $10 subscription to something like Splice or Output Arcade, and you can download samples and instruments and all sorts of things with those, um, with those, those packages. And you have to be careful, of course, when you're using samples um, as your song, because it has to make, you have to make sure that, especially if you're going to do things that um, might be out on content ID or something like that, where things are picked up and heard that you're not just using the same exact sounds everybody else says. You got to chop them up and do some different things and manipulate them to do what you want them to do. But you can make some really good music. And I have a client right now who is a very talented guitar player, but really is using samples and lining them up and mixing them together and doing things like that. So that is something that you can uh, look at doing. And guitars and keyboards aren't the only thing to make music with. You might have other instruments laying around your house, an accordion, a flute. Um, you might have a real piano. You um, Do you know, I have 50 to 75 songs right now on libraries that are just piano only. There's just solo piano. And they have made me a lot of money over the past year. I mean, uh, actually, uh, the solo piano things might be my best-selling stock music item, uh, personally. I do a lot of stock music that is solo piano, and uh, it really, it, it does it does very well. Um, my friend Dan Barracuda, who I did a video here, I'll put it here, but you can also find it in the content on my channel, uh, is killing it right now. And he only uses two tracks of guitar two he could use any i don't i think he uses pro tools but he could use reaper or any free software to record those two tracks of guitar and is making waves literally with just those two tracks and is paying his rent with spotify income hello and also has been accepted to many libraries including hard to get in ones like music fine um he's he's also been now he's in motion array and killing it from what i understand it looks like and that's only one guitar and two tracks so folks there is ways to make music income with very little instrumentation very little software power uh, instrument power all that kind of stuff so friends it just doesn't take a lot of expensive gear to do this sure it takes talent but that's not what we're talking about here all we talk about at Make Music Income, it kind of assumes that you have some modicum of talent. Um, you wouldn't sell recordings or videos about accounting or business or dancing or woodworking if you didn't know how to do it. 
in some way, if you weren't good at it or had some kind of background in it. So if you didn't have a resume or experience or background in music, you, you might not even be doing this. So there's no tool. However, that's not exactly true because in music, like I said, you can work with splice, you can work with uh, output arcade, you can work with loops that are in logic and in different softwares packages that you might have. And I'm telling you, the, uh, as long as you have an ear for music, you can make music and it just takes a little time and hard work to develop. And that is, that's really the key as far as what I, as far as I'm concerned. So next I'll get into what if I started with nothing because I really have several times. If anybody has any questions or thoughts, we'd love to hear them in the chat. I'm going to be answering those as we go along here, but I want to continue to offer you some information today um, about how to start if you have nothing. And um, again, it, this may also be if you feel like you have nothing. I mean, we all might have a DAW and we feel like we have the DAW and we feel like we have a few things, but we don't feel like we have what we need. And um, I literally, and again, I don't use the word literally at, at, at all. I just have a thing about it. I hate when people say, I literally starved to death. You know, I, I just hate when people use literally like figuratively and, and that's what they mean they figuratively starved to death or they but i literally did start out with nothing um now i do admit that i had a family uh who invested in me and i i grew up in a nice middle class family my dad was a musician my mother was a piano teacher so obviously we had a piano in the home my dad um played uh had a band um kind of a um what we used to call a dance band back in the back in the uh, 70s and he would play these these events these hotel events where people would come and dance and they played all kinds of stuff and he had an electric piano he had a fender Rhodes, a beautiful fender Rhodes um piano electric piano and it was in our living room and i would go play it without the sound on because you can kind of still hear the tines hitting inside the electric piano but um I always had access to music. I had access to um, a piano. Now, back in those days, there was no computer. There was no internet. There was no sounds you could download or anything like that. You just made music on whatever you had. But um, in the late 70s, my dad bought um, a grand piano. That's now in my living room, by the way. And uh, it's a baby grand. And he had a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck from Sony that I could play with and I could record on the left channel and then bounce it over to the right channel while I was recording something else and then bounce it back over there while I was recording. It was the old kind of um, multi-track recording, so, so to speak. You're just b piling sounds on each other. If you've ever taken a one thing and then you know, and then recorded it onto another while you're singing another part or playing another part, you'll know what I, I'm talking about. It's all in mono and then all of that i could bounce back and forth but and then guess what i got to print to cassette which is the worst so no fancy mastering tools um we got one of the first pcs in 1980 because my dad also worked at ibm but they were far from doing anything for music all they did was like clickety clack keyboards remember those old kind of keyboards and a, a black screen with green writing on it so there was not much music stuff going on. If it was, it was bleeps and bloops and stuff like that. Um, MIDI was just a, a an idea at that point. It was just starting to be used a little bit, maybe in larger studios. But in uh, around 1980, there wasn't much. There weren't any keyboards that I know of in 1980 that came with MIDI pre-installed. You could probably have them installed in it. Um, so, and by the way, synths were insanely expensive then because, I mean, we're talking pre-DX7, um, uh, just analog synths like Junos and, and things like that. Roland was making things, but they were like thousands of dollars. And so I couldn't afford any of that. So the best I could do when I started writing songs was to record them on piano and record them onto reel-to-reels. And uh, yeah, I had a ball... Love three. I mean, I, I had a ball recorded. I was down there all night. I lived 
with my dad uh, for a, a while and he had a basement where I just sat down there with the reel to reel and the, and I did have a grand piano. It was really a dark sounding piano. It's, it's a little brighter now because I had some work done to it, but uh, it was pretty, pretty dark. And I had these records, these, um, these records, they were called drum drops and they were basically loop records, big, but instead of loops, they were full songs played all the way through by a drummer and they were different, um, different kinds of songs, ballads, upbeat, rock, jazz, funk, whatever. And I had about, I don't know, about five to 10 of these and I would write songs to those beats and talk about beats low. This was, this was like uh pre pre any kind of drum machine or anything like that. Or if there were drum machines, I didn't have one maybe. So the early Lynn drum machines were around then. But I use these drum drop records and re record those first onto the reel to reel. And then I would begin playing the piano along with it. Sometimes I think I played right from the record. I played the record and played my piano at the same time. And it both went into the reel to reel. And then I would start recording vocals. Eventually, um, I, I, think, I think I got a, my first synth was a 19, I don't know, early 80s synth. It was like, like a Moog knockoff from Radio Shack. It was called the Realistic. Um, I can't remember. It was like a Moog Rogue, but it was uh, it had two oscillators on it, and uh, it, it's pretty. It'd be pretty cool to have now because it it's just. Um, but um, it, it was it was okay, and I, I did a lot of stuff with that and the drum drops and my piano. Eventually, I got more different things. And I, I don't think I had a full MIDI keyboard, a, a keyboard that had literal, had right the kind of MIDI in it until about 1986 or so. I got a Korg, it's one of my least, Korg Poly 800, which was one of my least favorite keyboards of all time. But uh, I gigged with that and did different things. And then when I was in Chicago around 1988, I got my first pro keyboard, the Roland d50 which is a classic and it sounded great but even that had no sequencer and i had no computer i was completely broke in chicago i had come from kentucky where i grew up no family in chicago so this is as close as i come to you wherever you are in the world so if you're somewhere in the world even um out of out of the u.s in some other country and you are completely cut off from any family or anyone who can help you that's what I was in the late eighties in 19 in, in Chicago. Um, it was a great time. I enjoyed it. I did a lot of cool stuff and, and met a lot of cool people, but I lived completely like in a, my, by myself. Um, and I sometimes lived in what they called, uh, a housing, uh, no, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's like where a bunch of people lived in a house at the same time. Uh, Concert mate MG one. I think it was Pete. Yeah, it, it was, it was killer and, uh, it was very fun and cute and colorful and, uh, and, but it just didn't make, it made only one, three types of sound. I think I had three waves on it if I'm not mistaken, but, um, so yeah, I lived in Chicago by myself. The only thing I had with me in my apartment was a couch and it pulled down to the bed. I took the mattress out and put it in like this little bedroom. And then I had my keyboards. I had at the time what I did, I, after I had the, the Roland uh, D 50 great keyboard. It was a very, it was like the new DX seven at the time I got it. It was like the thing you're hearing it all over the radio. And so I traded that in to get, because I wanted to sequence, I wanted to make sequences. I wanted to program drums and bass and everything again, still late eighties, not a lot to choose from that was affordable. And so I went and traded that D50 for an Insonic ESQ1. And the ESQ1 had an eight track sequencer built into it. And I eventually uh, got to be working with that all the time and programming in drums and bass sounds. They were pretty 80s kind of drum sounds, kind of like Lynn drums and uh, kind of synth basses. Um, and not much in the way of a real piano. I had a it tried a, a piano sound, but then I bought this little unit called a Roland U110, which was kind of like a, 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 a Roland's 1080. Uh, if you know what a, a it's 1080, but um, the JV stuff by Roland, 
and it was my first module, but it had decent piano, really a really good piano actually, and some decent basses and drums, some decent drums. And so I could plug that in through MIDI and I had a, a pretty decent system. Still no computer. This is late eighties. So I was creating music. There was no internet, so there was nothing to throw up on the internet. Uh, I could play gigs if I needed to play gigs with that, but I really wasn't gigging at that time. I was just living in an apartment by myself in Chicago with no parents, no family around, really no safety net, working any job I could work to. Uh, and, and, and that was what I call, and I think we all need this in our lives, and maybe you're in this part of your life right now, it, is we need that wood shedding time. We need that time where we are just creating and learning and figuring it out and learning how to, uh, I was learning how to sequence. I was learning how to basically do DAW stuff. I just didn't have a DAW at the time. I was doing it only on a hardware sequencer. So all of that time, still no computer. Um, by 1990, I had a pretty decent setup. I had the ESQ one and I had that. Eventually, I would tr trade in the ESQ one and get a VFX SD, which is also by Insonic. Better sequencer, better sounds, still with the U110. Um, so, if you think it's bad for you, try starting with no internet, no cheap gear, no free plugins, um, no computers really that you could afford, and none that did music anyway. I mean, still in 1990, computers were not really doing much music. Um, unless, like I said, it was bleeps and bloops. And then they were mostly for word processing and spreadsheets. And so they finally started to make sequencers like Cakewalk and Logic around early 1990s. And so let's change this to now. I mean, the, the rest of my history starts, goes, I got, a, I got a computer and I started doing early stuff with Cakewalk and then Logic. And through the 90s, then became started my professional career of working for artists and producing them uh, and making my own stuff and, and doing all that kind of stuff. And yeah, then the internet came along through the 90s. And by 95, I was creating websites and putting my stuff out, uh, out to places. So it, it really does, um, it, it really does open up the world with, with the, with the internet, of course. So next thing I want to do is start to now. What would I do now if I had nothing else? Um, Decent View says, I feel so blessed to have the things I do. 20 years ago, I never would have thought I'd be able to make complete songs on the computer like I can. Yeah, 20 years ago was 2000. I guess you could. Even in 2000, it was, it was dicey. I mean, I remember late 90s, I was, we were lucky to have four tracks of digital audio that we could use. And the rest was uh, synced through MIDI to uh, to the keyboard. So you could play the keyboard MIDI at the same time and you could play the four tracks of digital audio together. But it really didn't get until I would say uh, right around 2000 or maybe right before that, that you could do a reliable... And it, uh, remember, at that time, late 90s, people were still using... Uh, they were using uh, tape but they were using DA88s or, or ADAT, of course. And that was synced also to Logic or whatever thing that you were using. So this is before Pro Tools even. Logic, Cubase, things like that were around then. But Logic had really started to become a pro software at that time and do audio. And uh, I worked with a fellow at a studio who was kind of a, always a Logic guy. And... By the time I started working with him in the late 90s, I think he was using up to 16 to 32 tracks of, of audio on Logic. He had a pretty killing Mac machine at that time, um, even though uh, it was still on PC at that time. It was not bought by Logic yet. Uh, Ronan says, Tascam 4-track, absolutely. Had had a few of those. I had also had a 6-track. can't remember who made it. And then I had, I still have a Roland 4-track. Um, in the, in the closet in there. Um, and I ha had, I don't think I ever had an eight track. I had a MIDI studio six Roland six forty no, a Tascam six forty four MIDI studio, which had, um, I want to say eight tracks of audio and then you could sync it up to your keyboard and play the keyboard sounds. So, um, yeah, that is, um, that, that is back in the day. So, 
Um, any other thoughts about um, about back then? Anybody making music back then? Yeah, Tascam was a must in the 90s. So it sounds like a few of you were making music back then or at least trying to. And I think that, um, you know, that's that's just something we all have to, we, we all have a road. And, and those of us who tried to make music 30 years ago or 40 years ago, we're dealing with, of course, 40 years ago, I was just a kid. But, um, you know, we were all trying to make music acoustically to play. And, and that's another thing to think about with this whole conversation is that we're not just talking about making music income with stock music or with sync music because uh, stock music didn't exist back then. Um, you were doing gigs. And so if you had a guitar or a keyboard, you could go do a gig. If you were a singer, you just needed a microphone. So, um, and there are still, I have an ebook like in my free section of, of things, uh, how to make music income. There's lots of music incomes that you don't need any gear for. They either have the gear for you or you can find the gear yourself. So, you know, um, that's something to think about too. But um, Murfreesboro Guitar, hey, welcome. Is that Murfreesboro, Tennessee? Um, I had a Tascam mixer with the reel to reel in it. Yeah, cool. Murfreesboro, I went to school at MTSU for about four years to finish my bachelor's in uh, about 10 years ago. So, um, all right, now what I want to talk about, hey, well, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, so let's change this to now. And I wanted to just kind of do this, this thing. What if I had to start now with nothing? What if you put me in a foreign country and it doesn't have to be a war torn country or, or something like that, or, you know, but what if you put me in a place, maybe it was even here in the U S or someplace you put me someplace where all I had was clothes, shelter, and food. How would I start now um, to try to make music income, especially if I wanted to record it? Well, first, for the first few days, if it was a nice place and the weather was nice, I'd probably just explore and take a vacation, <laughs> to be honest with you, because it has been a rocking. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I live in Orlando, so you could literally say we're on vacation all the time. But uh, I, I still could use a, a little bit of time away from music for at least a few days, to be honest. But after this short vacation, um, I would need to make music somehow. And usually after a few days, I go crazy and start writing songs in my head. So if I had nothing, I guess what I would do was what I did when I was a poor, broke 20-something in Chicago. I would find a job, any job, maybe two jobs, maybe three jobs. I'd eat a lot of Raymond. I would drink a lot of water and, uh, I, I, and whatever, um, especially if I'm living alone. Um, how would I communicate with the world and make music in, in 2022? Well, the first thing I would do if here in this town or almost, uh, I know a lot of towns around the U.S., there are computers at public libraries. I would go there. It's free. I would immediately go online establish an email at Gmail for some thought, some kind of idea of what I want to be as far as a composer or a producer and uh, probably go on Instagram and start an Instagram profile. Um, I would hope that I could find a phone at a cheap, a cheap phone somewhere. That's a, it's a smartphone. And uh, even if it was a monthly type of thing, really low plan, whatever. And that would be my I would start communicating with people. If if I'm lucky enough to, to get an iPhone at one of these cheap services, boom, I've got GarageBand. I could start working that way. Um, I would start joining some sites like our Discord, which you can find below, and you should be part of our Discord if you're not. Um, I would be on Reddit. I would jump on YouTube and start absorbing videos. And I could do that all at the public library if I had to with headphones. I'd find a cheap pair of earbuds, which you can find for a dollar probably at the dollar store. I would um, I would work my way towards a, the cheapest PC or Mac that I could find. Laptop probably would be best. Some kind of cheapo laptop that I would find on Craigslist or eBay or something. And I would set that up with some cheap MIDI keyboard that I would find at um, 
online somewhere where you find a sub $50 keyboard and just get something that allowed me to input MIDI. And this is me as a keyboard player. If you're a guitar player, you'd probably go about the same way of trying to find a guitar um, to record. And you'd have to do some extra things. Although you could go in, you could go, you could go in direct, but you might also want need a microphone or something. And those aren't that expensive. I would download Reaper or some free DAW and start downloading some free sounds as much as the computer could handle. And I would, um, it'd be so, e to me, it sounds so much easier than uh, when I started. The, today, it seems like everyone has it so much easier. I don't care where you are in the world. If you're watching this video, you gotta be watching on something. You gotta have some kind of machine that you are watching this video on that, and that machine can likely do music of some kind. Um, I, I, so yeah, I, I, if I could, I would just find some cheap iPad or Mac. If I could find an iPad or Mac, I'd be set. Cause then I could use GarageBand and that's the easiest path I think to create in quality, uh, on a low, low budget. And then if I had a Mac, I'd save 200 bucks. I'd get logic. And then I'd be really set, really set because logic, uh, I'd have the world at my fingertips. I could download things from Spitfire Labs, which aren't too computer heavy, Piano Book, which aren't too uh, uh, heavy, uh, Decent Sampler. A lot of the Piano Book now is using Decent Sampler, which is not too heavy a program. And all the other free stuff I talk about in my video, I would have all that kind of stuff. And that that's the path I would take if I had to start today with nothing. Um, and and I think it's, it's available to anyone I just don't, I think the barrier to making music is lower than it's ever been, especially even, even music that you want to make for stock libraries and things like that. I think that barrier or to put up on Spotify, I think that barrier is lower than it's ever been. I don't know if you agree with me, but I would love to hear your thoughts either in the chat or the comments. Um, Ronan says, are there still pawn shops? I buy a lot of my keyboards at pawn shops for very cheap. So yeah, sure. Uh, there's, there's pawn shops uh, that sell guitars and keyboards and all sorts of gear that people sell or uh, try to get rid of, get quick cash. So you can certainly go to pawn shops. Uh, of course, we also have, uh, things like Craigslist that we never had, which everybody in town is trying to sell their stuff. Um, there used to be something called the thrifty nickel where I lived. It was like a, 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 a Craigslist on paper. And I don't know if that still exists. It was a free thing you'd pick up at the mu music store, or the grocery store or whatever. And people were all always selling stuff through that. You look at the newspaper, um, there's people selling stuff for cheap. And a lot of times, even at music stores, people are, are selling their stuff through the store for cheap. Pete says, maybe try to get a job at a local music store. Well, that's a great, that's a great thought. Great minds. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that, um, uh, a local music store. Again, that gives you the opportunity to, to maybe take home some gear, to practice on gear, um, to sign stuff out, all that kind of stuff. We used to do that from studios or different things like that. So absolutely. Murphy Spur Guitar says, you can connect a Scarlet to an iPhone. There you go. And when he says a Scarlet, he means an inter, uh, audio interface uh, that lets you plug a guitar into that and then go right from that MIDI into your iPhone. So yeah, an iPhone is really all you need with GarageBand. And there's probably other apps. Um, there's Aria Pro, which is a paid app, but it's a pretty full-featured um, DAW as far as at least audio recording. I don't know what MIDI it does. Maybe it does MIDI too. But uh, I've used it a little bit on my iPad. I've got quite a bit of software on my iPad that I just don't use, and I just need to use it. Um, I've got um, a really good... A um, bunch of sounds on there from, I can't remember what it is, but um, so there's so much out there. And, uh, you know, I think it, like I just said, as I went through what I would do today, um, it, it's certainly possible to, to, to start with nothing and make music income. And remember you can make music income other ways besides just making recordings you can make music income by teaching. You can make music income by uh, teaching in, either in schools or at jobs or or, or local student teaching, uh, individual teaching, private teaching. You can make music income working at a music store. You can make music income in a lot of ways, 50 ways, in fact, if you look at my 50 ways to make music income book 
There's a lot of ways. And it, some of it doesn't take any gear. Some of it doesn't take even any experience or at least uh, studying on, on a subject and trying to do things for people. And I think doing things for people is the best. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely think you can start from nothing. I did 40 years ago. I, I did 20 years ago. Um, I did before technology really caught up and I did once technology caught up and, um, I think anyone can do it. Um, even as, if you think it's hard now, I'm just telling you, you should have been around a long time ago before MIDI and before computers could do audio, um, before cell phones, before internet, it was a different world. And the only way to do things was analog and on tape and to deliver them on cassette tape or maybe DAT, which was a digital audio tape was a, a, a pretty higher end thing that we would do. And in the nineties, eventually we were able to print a CD, which became a thing through the nineties and, and became a way to, to really show something of quality off to people that did involve tape. DAT was also that there were a few other ways that you could, you could deliver high quality audio to clients or, or artists or whatever. Uh, Catalan, uh, thanks for joining. You said, how would you recommend naming and tagging music optimizing for the search algorithm? Let me come back to that after I finish this. If you will just hold on uh, one minute, I got a little bit left on this to do, and then I'll answer any questions you guys have and maybe talk about a few other questions I've gotten recently. Um, so if you take creating music and stock and sync out of the question, if you want to make music income, you don't need anything, but a voice, a guitar, a keyboard, drums, cello, whatever you play. You can busk on the street today with no instrument and get money thrown at you. Um, my, in my interview with Tamara Bubble, which I'll put up here once I get this thing finished, um, she did that. She, in Brooklyn, in, uh, in front of a stadium, she would sing with nothing. She would just sing out loud with a hat and people literally would put money in it. So you can make me his income with zero except your voice. Um, so it's possible. Uh, it doesn't require equipment or computers, but your only real excuses are if you are under siege in a war torn country. And I know our friend Barul from our uh, discord is in Ukraine right now. And, and, uh, uh, may, mainly spending time in his basement. And we're, we're, I don't know if we've heard from him for a few days, so we need to check in with him. Um, and, if you're in a country that has really low resources, I know there are people like our friend in Argentina last week uh, that that really struggles to find um, tools and even the money to find a computer and things like that. But again, I think there are ways to find a computer or a tablet or a phone in any country these days. Again, I have never been out of the States except for Jamaica. So, I mean, except for uh, Bahamas. So I am not a uh, world. A lot of you people from other countries can tell me a little bit how it is where you are. But I would imagine that any place you can find, if you're especially if you're watching this video right now, you've got some device that you are on. And it's probably a device that does music because you probably wouldn't be watching this if you weren't doing music. But um, you could tell me a little bit. Feel free to put in the comments or put right here in this video what it's like in your country to do this kind of work and, uh, and, and to find and to get a phone and to, or to get a tablet or to get a computer that does music. What is it like where you are? Are there free places for you to go? Could you go to a library or an internet cafe or someplace like that where you could get online for free or for very little money to get involved with music? Um, I would, and, and then if you have any kind of device, like I was talking about, I would hack that thing to make music somehow hack it like crazy. I've been hacking since I was 13 different. I've been hacking reel to reel machines and cassette machines and CD writing machines and multi-track machines and keyboards and hooking things together and, and working everything on a shoestring. To some extent, I still do that. You're watching this video. It's my, that's my phone up there. Um, I can't take calls. It's on airplane mode right now. So, uh, it won't ring. And, uh, you know, I am, I still hack to a certain ex extent. I, I haven't bought an expensive camera for this YouTube channel yet. And these two keyboards are not the highest in 
uh, MIDI controllers that exist. They're good ones, but this is the um, this is the Korg com com Korg. This is the complete by Native Instruments S sixty one Mark II, and this is kind of my newer M Audio Hammer Pro eighty eight. About eight hundred dollars here. About six hundred dollars here. Both come with sounds and are very good controllers. Uh, I've had way more expensive keyboards than this. Uh, my keyboard, I, at some point I'll put my whole keyboard list down and my whole gear list down and how it all evolved over time. It's kind of interesting. But as Steve and I talked about in our podcast a few weeks ago, uh, we are pretty Spartan. Besides those two keyboards, there's nothing here on this desk except an M-Audio interface, two speakers and a screen. So uh, in a Mac mini, there's, there's no other instruments here. Now, Steve has guitars and things like that, but I don't, I, everything else is in the computer. I am totally in the computer now. I don't, neither of these keyboards makes a sound. I have a piano in there, but I don't usually use it for piano. I have piano samples. So I think finding ways to make, um, available tech close, uh, to make music and show the world is your best bet. And it's important for everybody who's watching this video and who will watch this video is to find that tech that you can make music with. And then your music will find a way. If your music is good, it will find a way. And if you are as industrious as I was, to misquote Bach very badly, then anyone can have similar success. I, and I would add on to that, who has some modicum of talent in the first place. So, all right. So let's check out some things here. Love3 says, when I lived in a small village on a mountain in south of Italy, I had to travel for two hours and a half only just to buy guitar strings and there was no internet connection there. Yeah, I, I, it was only seven years ago. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think there are people right now who live outside of major cities. Um, I live, personally, I have to drive about an hour to get to a guitar center. So, and I live in Orlando, Florida, and I live on the west side and all the music stores are on the east side. So I have to drive through traffic and it takes about 50 to 50 minutes or so to get to a guitar center. So I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not seven hours away or two hours away, but I am an, a, a, an, almost an hour away. And I know people who are farther than that. The problem is, I mean, the solution to that is now we have Amazon. I could, because I'm an Amazon Prime member, I could have anything delivered by tomorrow. But that's not the same as going and putting your hands on something. I could never, I never was able to put my hands on this instrument here or this one before I bought it, which was a bit of like, is it going to be good? Is it going to feel good. And, uh, I've got reviews on my keyboard channel, which I'll, I should put in, I think it's in my channels down below that I'm going to be doing on both of these to talk about that. Um, uh, I'm going to get back to you, Catalan. So I just hold on just a second. Um, Rona says also joining a group such as this, along with Eric's discord community is very helpful for a lot of ideas and positive community. And definitely if you haven't joined our discord, go down below right now in the notes of this video and and go and join and be part of the conversations there we are talking about everything from sync licensing stock licensing um royalties and publishing and production and just about anything you can think of that makes you music income we're talking about it and there's it's over it's headed towards 500 people now um, when i took it over i think it was we were we were just a little over 100 and now it's it's just going crazy and so much information there from everybody uh, bringing their information in. Okay. So let me go back to Catalan's question, have a little sip here. How would you recommend naming and tagging music and optimizing for the search algorithm? Are you talking about the search algorithm on something like Pond5 or Motion Array or something like that? I would assume you are, since you're talking about tagging music. Um, well, you you have to study each library, and, and and this goes for stock libraries or sync libraries, what what whichever one you're trying to get in. You have to go and look at the other songs that are in those libraries and see how they've tagged them, see how they have named them. And ev now here's the problem: every single library works differently, and they. Um, uh, I would say the majority of them let you name the song the name. But some of the libraries, like Audio Jungle, like um, there's another one, th they ask you to write a descriptive name, like upbeat jazz music or whatever. 
and they ask you to to name it that way. What I'll end up doing is doing a combination and saying um, cocktail hour dash, um, you know, cock trio jazz with vibraphone or something like that. And uh, I'll do that on Pond 5 and, and things like that. But Motion Array only wants the name of the song. They don't want any descriptive terms in the in the title. So every library is going to be a little different that way. As far as uh, tagging it, uh, you just have to think think through it. This is jazz. This is upright bass. This is piano. This is drums. This is... And think of any other things you can do. This, but there's, I also have a video called Starting at Pond 5. And the reason I tell people to start at Pond 5, and you can find that below in my content, but just did it recently. I, I truly believe Starting at Pond 5 is great because they have pretty much a keyword generator that helps you tag each song. And that's why I start there with every song, not because I make the most money there. It's about my third best paying library by far, like Motion Rate by far is, is the biggest, but well, it used to be at least. And, Pond5 lets you choose a bunch of different keywords and it helps you kind of tag it. It doesn't auto tag it, but it does help you tag the songs. Now, some of the ones you don't have to worry about anymore. Uh, VFind does auto tagging now. They don't, they don't ask you to tag it any longer in their new system. Uh, I work with another library called Infinity Music Library. They don't have you do any tagging. As a matter of fact, all you have to do with that one is put the name in them and upload the file and you're done. So that's awesome. Uh, but as far as tagging uh, music and optimizing for search on libraries, uh, you just have to have to think of what people might be searching for to find that song. What would you search for in order to find that song? So that's what I would do with that. Um, if there are any more questions, I've pretty much gone through everything I wanted to go through today with uh, what if you started with nothing in music. And I hope this has helped you uh, a little bit figure out what to do if you were just starting in music production, music for licensing or whatever, uh, What, how to get started with anything. And the answer is basically GarageBand but, or, or Logic if you have a Mac or uh, free plugins and Reaper or uh, uh, sound, uh, Studio One Prime. Uh, that's that's kind of the answer now, but a, an iPhone, an iPad, and Lo and GarageBand or whichever. There's other DAWs. The Cubase, Cubase is uh, three. I think it's version three now. But Cubase is, is very strong too. It's just not quite as easy to use as GarageBand, which makes it pretty simple for you and always stays updated and um, has better sounds built in, all that kind of stuff. So, I would definitely. Uh, look at GarageBand if you don't have anything else. But if there are any other questions or thoughts in the chat, would love to hear them. Um, I do want to answer a question that I got via email the other day. And I'm going to just use my iPad here for this. And it was pretty, it was a pretty interesting question. Um, it was someone asking me about a similar type of thing. And let me see if I can just find that here. Um, Catalan says, thank you. Do you have any other income sources besides music? I heard you talk about web design, dude, or uh, I guess you're a dude. Uh, I have so many income sources. It is not funny. Um, my main income source is not, is uh, make music income is now an income source because my channel monetized, uh, last month. So that's nice. Uh, not much. It's going to be very little at first. It's about the same as stock income. It kind of helps replace a little bit that I lost at Motion Array. Um, I have stock music income. Um, I don't have any sync music income yet. That should start this year sometime because most of my libraries launched last year. Um, I, But my, my biggest, and, and Steve and I have gone through this. If you go back to our podcast, we talk about how we make music income. And so you can hear my entire story on, on what I do. Our top five, I think we did, maybe top 10 music incomes. But my main one is music production uh, and music consulting for artists and songwriters and composers and anybody. Uh, basically, a career advice, um, being a record label, uh, basically, for people that does pre 
album pre pre recording uh, work, uh, um, what we would call song de song development and artist development, and then recording, of course, and then into marketing, YouTube videos. I do edit video uh, and create videos for clients, and but all of that is inside of the monthly fees that they pay me to work for them as a producer and a record label of sorts, kind of label services, if you will. So that's the main thing that I do um, besides, um, I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, that's the main thing that I do that brings the most income. Uh, but then other bigger incomes are music uh, licensing, stock licensing. Um, I also teach. And so I get money from teaching and I'm looking at some teaching jobs uh, in the local area at colleges. And that's something I've been kind of aiming at for a few years and why I finished my master's degree last year is to get into some more uh, structured college teaching. But I do some teaching. Um, I have royalty income. I have uh, lots of different little incomes that come in. Uh, but most of it has to do with some kind of artist, songwriter, composer, uh, coaching, consulting, and or producing uh, and marketing for them. So that's the main way I make incomes. Um, Ronan uh, says, apologies if you've mentioned this before, but do you have a Zoom group chat? Yes, Ronan, we have uh, the music licensing mastermind that focuses on music licensing. That's the first one I have. And it's a private Zoom that happens at 12 p.m. every Monday. You can find that at Make Music Income slash mastermind or it's in the description below of this video so would love to have you join that i'm looking for more people to join that we usually have anywhere from five to eight people join there's about 14 people that are officially in it but you can find information that also on the web page makemusicincome.com about the mastermind and i'm getting ready to start a new one call for composers only and it's from my hello composers channel and I don't, I think I had a great name for it, but right now I'm just calling it Composition 101. And it's basically just going to be composition challenges every week where we are just writing something new every week and everybody is part of that. It's again a private Zoom that we um, that we don't do live, but we do it live, but we don't put it on a channel. It's it's private and everybody is up on the screen at the same time and we're working and I'm teaching. Uh, through that, but everybody is showing off their compositions on a weekly basis. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get to that very soon. Uh, Kellen said, yes, dude, Romanian name. Hello from traffic in Bucharest. Awesome. So glad to have, you know, one of the coolest things about this is having uh, different people around the world uh, be part of this. And so absolutely, dude, thanks so much for joining. Appreciate you being here. Hope you're here every week for our live. I really enjoy doing these. It's so much fun to answer questions and talk to you guys live. And it makes content that I don't have to edit. So, yay. Um, I mean, I love editing, but um, it's also great when you don't have to edit. So uh, Dice says, may you explain the differences in stock and sync a little bit? Sure. Uh, stock music is music that is used behind videos uh, that people make for YouTube or videos that people are making for corporate presentations. Just like you would go and get stock pictures to use on a YouTube thing or stock pictures that you would use for a presentation or something or stock video, you go get stock music. And we're putting our stuff up to these same libraries. And examples are in Vado Elements, um, Storyblocks. Um, there's different ones. Motion Array is one. And in they we all send music to these libraries or want to, right? Um, but they also have stock video. They also have stock fit photos. They have stock templates for Adobe Premiere. They have stock templates for After Effects. And so basically that is stock things, right? Music that stuff that you would go, you pay a subscription for maybe, maybe. And every month you can download as much as you want, or you go and buy one thing at a time. And it's for a use in a video that you're going to put on YouTube or something. Personal use kind of, but that you're going to maybe put out to the world. Sync licensing is anything that is music that is synced to television shows, to movies, to film, to advertising, commercials, to gaming, to, uh, and I'm talking about like PlayStation type games or stuff that is used somehow by someone for something where the music is going to be synced. That's why they call it sync. 
some kind of production music for, um, and then our libraries that um, act as these, just like there are stock music libraries that we send our stuff to, there are sync libraries that are focused on television and film and commercials. That's where the big three, that's the big three, where the, this is thousands of dollars per sale versus pennies or dollars per sale, like in stock music. But the quality has to be higher and the quality has to be with probably more than what you can just do on GarageBand. GarageBand is great for stock music, but for sync, it's, it's a little bit different in my opinion. You have to either be a terrific, amazing programmer with amazing quality samples. Um, <clears throat> and many people do this. Um, I do this a little bit. Or you need to use great quality session players and other people that you collaborate with. And I do that as well. I use people from Nashville and singers from LA and all over the place. So uh, that's kind of the difference in a nutshell. Uh, Pete says, how do you pay your collaborators um, with money? Hey, Stevie B. Look at it. Stevie B's made an appearance, ladies and gentlemen. He's here. Um, yeah, Pete, I pay everybody uh, as need be other than like, uh, let's say Stevie and I, which we hope to do, uh, is start uh, collaborating a little bit and doing some work together. Well, we would likely do 50-50 splits on on things, you know? So if we if I write something, I'd send to him, for instance, one of my things I want to do with Steve that um, we've been talking about is, is do some jazz type stuff and then have him add some uh, either orchestral stuff to it or, or his own beats and stuff to it and kind of just collaborate that way. And then if we get it in a library, well, then we will, we will figure out the splits that way uh, on how to do that. Yes, world famous. You're, Stevie B is, is the world famous Stevie B. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I, I I'll either pay them in money or in percentage of of back end or both. Uh, that's really basically the thing. So yeah, uh lo-fi collab, yeah. I hear that's a, a thing. Um all the jazz guys are doing it these days, from what I understand. So um <laughs> anyway, uh <laughs> Victorious uh, Dice says, thanks, Eric. I was a bit confused on what stock really meant. I appreciate it. I understand it better now. Yeah. And dude, there are tons of videos on my channel talking about the difference between stock and sync. Literally, I draw a line between stock and sync in my last week's video. It's called drawing the line. And it really kind of talks about the difference. It's the newest one that I have on that. But I have other ones also that also talk about that. But it's something that, that bears repeating because people confuse uh confuse them a lot and and um i think of them as they go right together i think of my lower end uh less um over produced stuff uh that that usually is stuff that i can do all by myself right here i can send to stock music but sometimes when i am uh not always but most of the time the stuff i'm creating for sync licensing involves other people singers players in Nashville um, and just other people, programmers and things like that, that makes the music have a little bit more dimension than just, just me. And I think that's important for sync because it's a, it's a competitive world out there. You better have stuff that just is awesome and not just you messing around on some MIDI stuff and send, put and uh, throwing some samples together. So uh, you're welcome, Pete. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Stay Golden says you pay them retroactively or you're able to set up splits like DistroKid. You know, I've tried the DistroKid split thing. Here's the problem with the DistroKid split thing. Everybody has to pay DistroKid. You have to have a DistroKid account. And even if they didn't have to pay for it, the likelihood that I could get them to, to take the time to sign up for the DistroKid thing, uh, it would it would have to, they would have to find out they're missing out on hundreds or thousands of dollars. If they think they're missing out on pennies or dollars, they're not going to, they're not going to make the time. These are people who are making 600 to 600 plus a day to go do sessions. They're not worrying about a dollar here or there from a stock library or for, or even from sync uh, until I can show people that there are $10,000 um, things happening, $2,000 things happening. Uh, and I don't have that yet. Personally, I had, I almost had this close to a $30,000, uh, uh, advertising 
thing last year. If I had that um, and could show people that, and because I would have had to give them extra payments, some of the players, that would like awaken, awaken them a little bit to maybe getting involved in some of these split things. But it's harder than you would think to get people to uh, musicians, especially professionals who have been working in worlds where they've made way more than 600 a day, where they've made, you know, triple that a day, where they've made quadruple that a day. And now they're looking at, you know, someone saying, hey, if you sign up to DistroKid for $19.99 a year, I might pay you $5, you know, so they're, they're not, uh, they're not too crazy about that. So they would rather get paid up front for the day and not be involved in the back end. Um, although some are coming around, there are a few that are doing, uh, licensing all the time and it's becoming a, a very big income stream for them. So they are more interested in getting into percentages of things, especially if you offer them BMI splits, um, and things like that. If they co-write or co-arrange with you and you give them a, a split on the BMI, on the PRO level, they're interested in that sometimes. Uh, but, and probably more interested in that than promises from me that I'll split the, the sync fees with them. So uh, yeah, um, stay golden. It's happening. Um, uh, but they, I think they prefer something more like a PRO split than a distro kid split because distro kid doesn't mean anybody, anything to anyone who doesn't know what it is. And, but everybody knows what their PRO is and, and the, everybody in the music business who is a pro is counting on their, their PRO, their BMI, ASCAP, whatever being the retirement fund. So that's, uh, the real thing that I think they're looking at signature music. Keep up the good work. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks so much for being here today. It's been a fun thing talking about this. I mean, um, I know a lot of people who feel like, hey, I'm starting with nothing. How do I get to where you are? And all I can say is I, I've been grinding for 40 years. How about you? And everybody, I've been grinding with whatever came along, whatever gear I had. Steve and I just talked about it a few weeks ago. We have very stripped down gear now. Uh, we have we have our, our axes and we have logic and, and any free samples we can download. And those are all available to you as well. Uh, absolutely. So, well, if there's no other questions or thoughts, I'm kind of done here and it's getting close to time for some podcasting. Hey, stay going. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks everybody for being here and being online and all the questions, all the chats. It's been great to have you guys, but now it's time to do some Make Musing Podcasting. We're very excited about that. Stevie B's waiting. He's tapping his fingers, waiting for me to join him soon on a podcasting. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kai Dream Beats says, Hi, Eric. I have two albums, six tracks each. One of them I already sent to Jingle Punks. Is it okay the way I'm pitching one album at a time? Sure. Um, I think it's good to pitch more than one song, and it's good to pitch – a lot of people like Jesse at sync my music. He always suggests 10 songs. Um, I'm fine with that too. Uh, if you've got them, Hey, I appreciate you stay golden. Thanks for watching. Um, but Kai dream. Yeah, man. Uh, I would continue to send in those. I would be careful to uh, be as patient as you can. Uh, uh, let jingle punks have, you know, a, a, a good couple of weeks, if not a month to, to reply to you and maybe send the other album to somebody else, um, and, uh, and see what kind of response you get. Um, I, I kind of sent the same bunch of songs out to about four or five libraries. When I first got signed to my BMG library, uh, that was a, a kind of a calculated risk, but, uh, it depends on who you ask. If you ask Jesse, he has never sent the same album to everybody. And then there are other people who say, Hey, do, do what you got to do, you know, and, and get them out there. So yeah, I think it's okay. The way you're pitching six tracks is actually pretty perfect. I think, uh, I, I know Jesse says 10, I, um, I have three different exclusive libraries and each of them likes music differently. One likes it one song at a time. One out, one likes to hear a few songs that are in the direction of the album. And then another one likes to hear 10 uh, at a time to know, I mean, that one that takes 10, my BMG library, they will, 
listen if i show show them three or four songs and say hey do you like the direction of this they'll they'll be okay with that too but we have a relationship now this is not like a first stab me throwing stuff at them so uh yeah it it's it's definitely something that we uh we do and and you can do it just about any way but i think six is great so all right, folks. Well, thanks so much for joining me on this stream. And if you have any more questions, put them in the comments below. I'll absolutely be answering that. Kai Dream, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your, your, your loving the channel and being part of the channel. And uh, super, super great to have you here today. Love three. Hey, thank you. You, you are always here. Thanks for being here today. It's time to start mixing for the cymatics contest. I don't know what that means. Uh, John Mayer. Hey, thanks for being here. Um, everybody, thank you again for being here today. And it's been a lot of fun and I hope this has been helpful for you today. And so now I'm going to end the stream. Pete, thanks for hanging out. Everybody, Stevie B, how can I be the man when you demand? That's a, that's all I have to say about that. So, uh, white beam, thank you so much for being here since the beginning today. Everybody who's been here, uh, since we started. Thank you so much. Kai Dream, take care. We'll hope to talk to you soon. Make sure you email me if you want to, if you have other questions or put them in the comments below. And uh, we'll see all you guys next week. Dice, peace. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you next week on Make Music Income Live. All right. The stream is ending. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.